runners of Brazil in, in a final. And they're away. And immediately, the green car of Rick Hoffman has... <coughs> apologies. It disappeared into the distance. Uh, followed by his brother. So it's Hoffman 1, Hoffman 2. Good start from the 5 of uh, Sasha Kuz. But the Hoffman benefit within 20 seconds... It's a good clean start, though, isn't it? They've all gone through really nicely. They've all, kept taking, they've all taken their chill pills for the first couple of laps. All ten cars in a line. This first accident happens there, and that's the five falling off. The seven nibbles at the three, so Callum Gunn already met causing some problems. He looks to get the bottom of the podium. But your leader, it's Hoffman from Hoffman. It's the green, which is Rick, and it's the orange, which is Heiss. Obviously, if they hit each other and take each other out, you wouldn't want to be at the dinner table. So it's a Dutch 1-2. And Callan Gunn, interestingly, is able to keep up with him. I don't think Callan is qualified 7th because he broke, his, he broke his wishbone. So let's make the focus 2nd place because Gunn's now coming back onto Heiss. And you kind of think that uh, Peter's kind of... Uh, Rick's got this one, Hoffman. But 2nd place up for grabs. And with the attrition of the circuit, who knows what will happen to Rick? As we are now a minute and 20 in. And the battle for second is hopping up as the Australian looks to get inside the Dutchman. Interesting, running much higher profile front tyres on the uh, the orange car of Gunn compared to the red car, sorry, red car, the, the orange and yellow car, to the yellow tail car and, and fluorescent orange, which is now in third as Heiss has dropped back. With much lower profile front tyres and a much, much higher profile look to the tyres of Callan. I'm wondering actually all that is that may be an optical illusion. He may actually have done that trick of sticking on um, the sideboards of other of old tyres to perform a protector sort of falling off because I don't think the uh, the round was as much. So it may be he's just using a different different concept where you stick on the uh, they've been doing quite a lot and they actually have glued on the outside of old tyres to make, give their rim double thickness to stop the tyres shredding off thing and gun loses all drive and Heiss is all over him. By the way, um, Rick Hoffman's miles ahead, much to be expected, but the battle is on for second place. Two and a half minutes in, and Heiss was a fabulous drive round the outside and just doesn't make the move. Gun stopping him. So Heiss. It does appear that your car either works well on the sweeping bits or works well on the bumpy bits. I assume that's pretty much because to get the sweeping bits right, you have a setup that is stiffer, which is not going to work as well on the uh, the very cratery parts. You see, now we've got all the twisty sections. Gunn is pulling away from Hoffman. That's Heiss Hoffman. Seven pulling from two. Dark orange from fluorescent orange and yellow. But I kind of feel that if it gets to running out, and this is it, look, suddenly bang, up the line, suddenly Hoffman's right on his tail again. Gets much better drive. He'll come around here again, get, get a drive again, line it up much more in control and right on his tail before he made that minor mistake. And then we'll come to the, the pondery bits here and Callum will begin to stretch his lead again over Heiss. Behind them, it's now the 8 of Alex Mulder and the 9 of Simon Luches who are in 4th and 5th, but obviously 2nd and 3rd is a more interesting battle in 4th and 5th. And Hoffman's a bit close this time round, so if he can hold this distance, you kind of wonder what he can do down the straights. Well, Gunn got away with that one, didn't he? Came in too tight and pinged it across. And actually ended up with a net lead on that one, or a net gain, sorry. So, oh, he's made a mistake, and they hit each other. Oh, and Gunn's wing's broken. Right, so we need to get tight on that as a wing breakage on the gun machine. Now, it's not as bad as the last one we saw, which was bent off. That's still going to be giving him aero. Just a fall when they come together. Just at a funny angle, he gets through. That's a, that was that was a no uh, quarter given pass, and he goes back past Heiss again. Just so you know, Hoffman is now in the lead by eight seconds. Um, I'm not sure how much we're going to see of Rick for the first part of this track, but he is there. He is winning. He is winning easily, and we are even five minutes down. Four minutes twenty down, and Callan sort of breaks on the hole and gets rear-ended. Now, looking closely, I'm not sure the damage to the wing. I think. Is it's just bent, it's not uh, broken. So neither of the stays are broken. But what we are seeing now is a attempt to bridge the gap by Simon Luces. So Luces now is attempting to bridge the gap to Gunn and uh, Heiss Hoffman, who have kind of been tripping each other up most of the time. As Hoffman now sticks as tight as he can to the S's of the Samba section. 
and then rolls it, and that's Lucy's through. So that's now is this going to result in a reduction of pressure for Callan Gunn, or will Lucy be able to catch up with him? Let's run with the number nine for a second. Who's bumped up? Actually, hasn't bumped. He's just qualified at the back. So, Xavier Simon. I must work out actually what his name is. It's one of those Spanish names that has multiple kind of subtext to it. It's Xavier Simon. OK, right, Xavier Simon. That makes it much easier for me to remember. As he hops around, and he's certainly not being dropped, and Gunn falls in a hole, gets out of a hole, and he's just ahead of Simon. Just to remind you, Rick Hoffman's still miles ahead. And already, I think, winding it back to just keep that gap gently growing. Two-wheel drive cars, and they're showing some remarkable skill to keep these things pointing in the right direction. Not only with the lack of grip, but with the bumps away. But have a Simon in the multicolour. Oh, and Gunn's rolled over, and he's sort of blocked Simon, so he's not lost much time. Simon got past. Let's see that one again. Came round. And in doing so, in an attempt to get it up, he just, oh, just, just grip rolled. That's the point. He actually grip rolled on the, there's a huge ledge as you go onto the uh, gravel grid, which is kind of a, named after a cattle grid, which is quite smooth at one point. And Gunn is falling back into the clutches now of the eight machine of Alex Mulder of the Netherlands. So the second place, which is Xavier Simon now, is a long way behind our leader. But he's... Now, Gunn now has got the... Uh, getting the hurry up back on to try and bridge the gap back to Simon. But he's taking Mulder with him. And also the three cars back in it of uh, Adrian Urich, who had a bad start and is now looking to do a bit more with his with his time. See, if... if, if not being funny, but if Rick Hart wasn't in this race, it would be a classic. But unfortunately, he is in this race. He's doing brilliantly. And he's 11 seconds ahead without trying. So High Softman's dropped right back and is now just having a battle with the three. There's a dusk, a bit more wind because the dust is getting really bad for us to see. Everything's even up a bit. So we dropped back a couple of cars to High Softman, who fell back, the orange and the yellow. He fell back behind several cars a, a, a couple of laps ago, but now he's trying to move way back forward again. He's coming up to Mulder. And we are seven and a half minutes down, 22 and a half to go. And we've got a car stricken. Who is the stricken car? Stricken car. Uh, I'm afraid it's our Australian. He's dropped right back down. So Callan, I'm also not totally sure he hasn't broken the car. Gunn having problems now. He's dropped right back to about ninth place. So Mulder... And Heisman, then Heisman, and Heiss, they are battling for third. And Hoffman now looking to make it a Hoffman one-two. But to do that, first of all, Heiss has to get past Mulder, and then he has to get by Xavier Simon, and he's got past Mulder because Mulder's upside down. And ooh, be careful there. And I'm afraid that Callan Gunn has retired with a suspension failure. Thank you, all of viewers. So off camera, Gunn in the pits with a suspension failure. It's a rough old track out there. So... Let's have a look at our leader for a bit. We won't see him at all. He's just now going through the second part of the Sambareses. As we come up to the first third of the race, nearly completed. That is Rick Hoffman. He's led from the first buzzer. And he's now leading by 14 seconds. He certainly drew a lot of holes in his body, that's for sure. With the Hornament. It all looks completely in control, doesn't it? It's all like, okay, I'm just driving round. I'm going to avoid that bump. That's not hard. 
It's not a problem for me. I can do it all. And that's the key, isn't it? He's, he's, getting, he's getting speed by really not pushing anything he's doing. So, uh, good luck to the young man. Beautifully smooth round the top corners. Over the double. Lapping in the 42s and 43s. And his nearest rivals, well, last lap was a 49 and a 45. He now leads by about 30 seconds, I think. So... As we are now with 11 minutes gone, let's go and see what else is happening in the world of this race. And I think what's happening is we look at the, down to the car 8 and the car 1 who are battling on the uh, Sambaresis. I think that's an emerging battle for third place because uh, I think we've lost our second place man. He's been carried back. Yes, I think our second place man has been carried back. The 9, so out of second place has gone... Uh, Xavier Simon into second place has gone Heiss Hoffman. It's a Hoffman 1 2. And this battle here, the 3, the 5, and the 8, which is uh, Ulrich Mulder and Sasha Kuz, they are your drivers who are battling for the bottom step of the podium. In fact, we are down to, I think, seven cars already, I think. So three cars gone already, and we're not even halfway. We've had a busy weekend and a pounding weekend, so it's a, not surprising we've had some breakages. And Heiss Hoffman's made a mistake, and Heiss Hoffman now is right... That was a bit, bit fancy, wasn't it? Heiss Hoffman is now, is right next... He's now pulling into the... So there's poor old uh, Alex Mulder, and he kind of... Oh, yeah, Adrian, well... Six and a half thousand million. Did he cut, did he cut across? Was he pushed out? But it didn't help the uh, green machine of uh, Martin Krauss, that's for sure. Right. So, the situation now is that in second place is Heiss Hoffman. He's not a massive distance ahead of Adrian Ulrich in the three. So, let's, let's go with the three, the bright yellow three, Frank. He's trying to catch the two, which is Heiss Hoffman. My big worry is whether any of these cars can have any rear grip at the end of half an hour. They haven't got much to start with. The tyres were, they have none. So Ulrich you can see his, his target, which is uh, Heiss Hoffman. They fly. He is gaining. He's gaining quite slowly, but gaining very definitely on Heiss Hoffman. And this battle for second now is beginning to build out. That last lap was a 46th place of 44, so a two-second gain on Heiss. So it's orange and yellow against all yellow. Adrian Ulrich from Slovakia. And Heiss Hoffman from the Netherlands. So now, look, we're just coming at the halfway. We're not quite at halfway yet. Whether we can find that... Uh, now, interesting, Hoffman put in a good lap there. He managed to pull back away slightly. He got another 7 tenths. And the ultimate gap is just over two seconds. So less than half a mistake. And suddenly, look, this, in this lap already, you can see how much closer... Ulrich is to Hoffman. That's Heiss, the second place Heiss. First place 
Rick is still happily multiple seconds ahead of everybody. I think it's very likely that Rick will lap the field at this point and then a very unlucky bounce there for Adrian and he just lost all momentum. And there is a bit of kind of mountaineering more than driving in some of these cars. Are having. They're just getting stuck and having to just draw, oh, can't get out of the hole. It's not quite so bad with the four-wheel drive cars, of course. The two-wheel drive cars, you get too stuck, it's really hard to get moving. But they're right nailed together now for uh, second and third. Or it can high soften, high going quite wide. Or it's staying low. Not really carrying the speed the Hoffman was, but Hoffman had to go further. They went around the outside. And that's a good set of corners for Hoffman. Just pulled a little bit on uh, Ulrich. It's a yellow chasing car. And when they get on the end of the lens there, the dust gets in the way. And you can just, all you can see is well, very little, actually. <laughs> So good lap for Hoffman. He's just pulling away. And he's gained a little bit there. He's a 44-6, played the 48. Got gained second and a half. Not quite sure where he gained a second and a half, I'm honest. Didn't see any particular mistakes in the Ulrich lap. But these cars, with 16 down and 14 to go, are going to be changing the whole time. It's absolutely key to keep going. And interestingly, Heiss Hoffman now is gapping... Ulrich relatively simply, so something's changed within the Ulrich car because it was right over the back of Hoffman. Or Hoffman's changed something in his own driving because he's breaking away. So we'll see him over the line because that will tell us how far behind his brother he is. And Rick Hoffman is uh, 26 seconds ahead after 22 laps. Alex Mulder currently third, Sasha Cruz is fourth, Martin Kraus is fifth, and Eddie Rabonso is fifth. Peter Hartman, Simon Javier, Simon Javier and uh, I'm praying Callan Gunn have all retired. And we've now lost the eight in the middle of the track, so that's the end of Alex Mulder. So another car bites the dust. And the question here about how many are going to finish, we're down to six, 12 minutes to go. I think they're, they're looking like they might try and get the Mulder one restarted, but he's obviously out of the running for a, a top position. He was running in fourth, so Hill's going to drop out of fourth, which is offering a, a, a lifeline to some of the other places. Let's go back to our leader. He's about to go down the main straight, Frank, car number one. He's actually having problems staying in the car number five at the moment. So I'm not sure, actually, whether... Rick Hartman is starting to have some problems because he's just been overtaken by the five who unlapped himself as Sasha Crew. So he could be he's just going incredibly, incredibly carefully or he could be beginning to suffer as he moves into the unknown territory of minutes 20 to 30. Not quite there yet. We're at minute 18 and a bit. But you don't really expect to see that five car unlap itself from the one. But it's got lapped again now. So Hartman... I'm not sure if Rick is, I'm sure he's running out of tyre. Can't see anything particularly awry with his car at the moment. That last lap for Rick was a 47. So whether he, he's lost a lot of pace. Now, what we're interested to see is what happens in this lap. Because we watched him around the last lap. There's nothing wrong with it. It was just a 47. I think he's so far ahead, he can probably do 47 until Christmas and he'll be fine. That by Heiss was a 44, so no one's going that quickly now. I think the tyres are wearing out and they're losing most of their drive. Heiss was three seconds faster that time. I don't think, I've no idea if we could ever get close enough to see, I don't think there's much grip left on the uh, Rick Hoffman tyres. That lap was a 45.8, so a bit better, but still a couple of seconds behind what he was doing on a clean lap earlier. I expect that level of wear and tear, the two-second lap wear and tear, is what is being experienced by everybody. I'm sure by his brother, because his brother's in the same uh, manufacturer and type of car he is. And Hoffman going, yeah, 45-6. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're both rotating at the same time at 45. No one's 
cracking the 45 at the moment, 46 for Adrian Urich. And they've got 20 minutes of tyre wear on. And Hoffman, he comes down underneath us. And kind of, I'm just shutting the whole thing down, 45-2. So he's still going faster, or as fast as anyone else. Even though he's already dropped two to three seconds off his pace because effectively low grip. And there are six cars circulating, and the order is Rick Hoffman, Heiss Hoffman, Adrian Ulrich, Martin Krause, Sasha Cruz, and Ellie Ribasson. They are your six runners. The really interesting thing is that uh, Rick Hoffman has not dropped either the four or the five car, either Martin Kraus or Sasha Cruz, in the last five laps, and obviously lapped them. And he's now no further ahead than he would be before. And the only reason they haven't unlapped themselves is because they keep hitting each other. 46 flat for Hoffman that time round. But my guess is we've got an awful lot of cars out there with, with if not bald tyres, tyres which aren't gripping where they want them to. Well, there's Michael Van Dick saying that it might just be that they don't want to run out of fuel. I don't think, given the lack of time you're at anything like full power, that this is a particularly thirsty circuit. It's not particularly hot either. It's about 26 degrees, not horribly hot. So I don't know that they will be that worried about fuel. And obviously, Rick Hartman can wind the whole thing back and not bother anymore. For he is so far ahead. 46-3, 45-4. That's between him and his brother. Let's go and look at his brother in second place. He's coming over the F for doubles now. It's Heiss Hoffman. Down to seven and a half minutes. So Heiss, he's a little bit quicker, you know, two, two tenths to five to seven tenths a second per lap. But with six minutes, 40 seconds to go and being, well, a long way behind in the fact that uh, Rick's already finished his most recent lap with a 47.7. So he is slowing down and Heiss is going round in a, I assume, about a 46. It's going to take a long time to catch up when you're a long way behind. So he goes out through in a 46.5. Yep. But he's uh, 21 seconds back. So Rick Hoffman effectively has just wound the whole thing, wound the dial back to I'm going to finish and I'm going to become European champion. And why not? Let us say that. Why not indeed? Why not just become European champion? I mean, obviously, we'd rather you entertained this with a couple of crashes first and made it really close to the last couple of laps. But, you know, what can you do? So let's find our third place moment, Adrian Urich. He's the all-yellow car, just uh, going into the San Bresses at the moment. Hoffman did a much better lap there, 45.5. Just coming up to 25 minutes gone, five minutes to go. Five 
as the sat nav lady says, five minutes to drive. And you're with the third man, Adrian Ulrich. Fourth place is Martin Krause. He's in the number four car. He's actually in the trainer cars attempting to get past Hoffman. He's got past Hoffman now, so he's in the yellowy car coming down towards us now. And he's going to be turning left for the no-name double any second. As Hoffman's let both the four and the five go in a very restrained bit of driving. He's so far ahead, doesn't need to bother. But this is your fourth place man. Martin Krause, you've got Sasha Kuz battling for fourth and fifth with him at the moment. They're not too far apart. So there's actually a battle for fourth and fifth as we speak. Not the most exciting battle in the world, but there is a battle for fourth and fifth. Which is Martin Krause and Sasha Cruz. Cruz in the blue car, the blue car, in the green car just behind that mainly yellow machine that's coming down towards us now. That's the real-time battle. They were stuck behind um, Rick Hoffman for a while, so he let him go. And he's, I'm going to win this race in the slowest time possible. Three and a half minutes left of this, the two-wheel drive large-scale off-road European Championship final, brought to you by HPI Racing, brought to you by... Graffield body and brought to you by Samba Exhausts and brought to you by us, RC Racing TV, with the help of EFRA, and we are EFRA's official media partner. And in the time it took me to say all that, it's quite obvious that uh, Martin Krause is beginning to pull a little gap on Sasha Cruz. So much so they managed to get a car in the middle, which is Ellie Rabos on the sixth place man. So Just under three minutes left. A nice slight, a better lap from Hoffman, 45.2. That's a Rick Hoffman who's leading. His brother, comfortably in second place. Saw off the uh, attentions of Adrian Ulrich uh, mid-race. And Hoffman has been, well, imperious really for this entire... Oh, and that's a change for position. Well, change back for position, should I say. The four goes back past the five. Kraus goes back past Cruz, having just lost it earlier. Rabusson unlaps herself, which is nice for her. Him, sorry. I do apologise. And we have lost Alex Mulder, Peter Hartman, Javier Simon and Callan Gunn. So let's celebrate our uh, potential winner uh, and find uh, Mr. Hoffman again. Rick Hoffman, he's coming down over the no name double now. He's led this race from the off. And by that, I mean literally from the off. There's none of this like almost led from flag to flag. No, no, he led from flag to flag. And he goes up over the jump in the middle of the straight. It's not often you see someone who's actually been measuring himself for the finish from about minute 10 of a half hour final. But in qualifying, he TQ'd every single round. He won his semi final and has been in a class of his own. Oddly, this happened last year as well with the two wheel drivers, one of them, I think, my wife actually finds her, and that was, he was in a class of his own that day as well. Just obviously, I think if you get the two-wheel drive hooked up, there's not much anyone else can do about it with someone's going that well. Hoffman's dropped his early pace of 43 seconds. He did a 43, 43 flat early on, which was a uh, second fast than his brother's done all day, or, or in this race. And now he's easing back to 47s. And letting his brother come back to him. But his brother came back to him about a second or two seconds. Um, and that's it. So Hoffman now has is on his last lap. 
This will take him to a European Championship and, and, and the definition of well-deserved. When you TQ'd every round and you've won your semi-final and you've won your final by measuring your pace in a Jackie Stewart style, only going as fast as you need to win. Basically, this is the perfect performance and you have to stand up and applaud Rick Hoffman because this, in two corners time, is going to be one of the best demonstrations of two-wheel drive, drive, two drive large-scale driving on a tricky track. And there we go, Rick Hoffman, European champion and very, very, very well deserved. Great performance by Rick. Smile beaming from ear to ear. The others come in, little fist pump. His brother next to him going, well, it's not too bad, I was second. And it's a Hoffman 1-2. We know that Adrian Uri become third. Martin Krauss will be fourth. Sasha Cruz will be fifth. And Eddie Rabusson will be sixth. And that is a great performance by the Hoffmans, and they are the two-wheel drive large-scale European champions of 2016. Oh, right. Oh, dear. That one never really took off, did it? After the excitement of the short course, that was a little bit less exciting, but there we go. These sort of things happen. What can you do?